Hi, everyone. Uh, let's, uh, let's get started. Welcome to my talk on explainable AI for addressing bias and improving user trust. I'm Anna Rohrbach, a research scientist at UC Berkeley. I'd like to start with something that may be obvious to all. AI these days impacts all of our lives. It has started to affect our lives in many areas from law enforcement to healthcare, and maybe soon enough it will drive your car and decide whether to hire you to your next job. So if you place so much trust and so many decisions in the hands of AI, it's only natural to ask why was a certain decision made? And this is where explainable AI or XAI for short uh, comes in. Even more specifically, from the engineering perspective, XAI can help us better understand, debug, and improve our models that we develop. Perhaps as developers, we would like to understand if it has any unwanted behaviors or biases before we deploy uh, this system so that we have a chance to correct it. From the user perspective, XAI can help us facilitate trust, improve user experience overall, leading to wider adoption when it comes to uh, tools such as self-driving vehicles, for example. So in this work today, uh, I'd like to review two, um, two of these scenarios. One is where XAI can help us understand and address bias in our models. And later I will talk about how XAI can help us facilitate trust in the scenario with the driving controllers. But let's start with the first scenario where uh, we're, we're looking at an issue of uh, gender bias in image captioning models. Specifically, we have uh, at some point discovered that if you look at the examples of men and women in a standard benchmark, that uh, the prediction for gender for men was much more accurate than the prediction for women. Uh, specifically, you can see that for women, uh, it would often get misclassified as male. So we started to wonder about why this discrepancy in behavior uh, is happening. And the first finding was that, well, there is indeed more men than women in the training data. So that could alone create a certain bias towards just more frequently predicting men. But we see that uh, in the generated captions, the bias gets further amplified, and we are predicting even more examples with men and even fewer examples with women. So is it all there? Uh, is that all that there is to it that we just have more examples of a certain category? I guess things uh, we could get more insight if you if you look deeper, and this is where the visual explanations would come in and help us understand why does the model make certain errors. For example, here. It predicts a man sitting at a desk. And so why, why is this mislabeling is happening? In fact, if we visualize where the model was looking as it was predicting uh, this gendered word, we find to our surprise that it was not even paying attention to the person, but to this laptop computer. So there may be some spurious correlation in the data which the model simply learned. And Furthermore, even if the prediction is accurate, it predicted in this case that this is a man holding a tennis racket, it may still be for the wrong reasons, as it was actually attending to the tennis racket and not to the man. So in this work, uh, the, uh, we have two contributions. One is we want to address this gender bias issue. We want to correct the predictions to appropriately refer to people in images. And second, we want to make sure we are using the right evidence so that we are right for the right reasons so that the, uh, our model's attention implicitly focuses more to people uh, away from the, from the context. And the intuition to our approach is quite straightforward. Uh, our model equalizer relies on the following um, uh, facts. If the image uh, has a clearly visible person, there is uh, basically we should be confident about the gender of this person. We can see them, uh, this person clearly. So we want to confidently predict that this is a man, perhaps flying a kite. In the second example, where we have masked out a person, we don't want our model to be confident that this is a man or a woman based on any uh, contextual cues such as a kite or grass or trees. Um, so this motivates our design. Our model equalizer comprises of several losses. For the uh, standard images with people, we have a caption correctness loss, which is always used in image captioning. And we have confident loss, which we introduce here to facilitate that the gendered words get predicted accurately. So it's just a simple ratio of probabilities of, in this case, predicting female words to male words. So we want to minimize that. In this case, with the masked out images, we are going to have uh, also the caption correctness loss, 
uh, with one exception, we don't want to penalize the gendered work in this case because we don't want to kind of, uh, we don't have any sort of ground rules for that. Instead, what we want to say is that for that gendered word, we want to be confused. So this appearance confusion loss, the intuition is we want the probability of either male or female gendered words to be equal. And so this overall idea of equalizer um, sort of uh, builds on this. Experimentally, we can show that all of the losses that we introduce are important to get the best final performance. First, we look into the, the distance to the ground truth ratio of just predicting men and women labels. And we see that here, when lower is better, our model can get the lowest distance. So it's, it follows the closest, the true distribution. Um, we also look at the misclassification error rate. And again, we see that our full model gets the, the smallest error rate. Finally, it's important to revisit that we have these two classes, men and women in the data set, and men is a majority class and women is a minority class. So the overall accuracy might not reveal how the individual classes perform. And sorry, and um, here we can see that for men and women, we achieve a much more similar um, outcome because we are getting now much more similar uh, correctness and incorrectness rate than the, uh, the original baseline. Finally, uh, last but not least, we wanted our model to be right for the right reasons. And here we use visual explanations again to reveal where the model is looking as it is generating these words. And we evaluate whether it's look at, uh, looking at the person or not. And we experiment with several different explanation techniques. And in all cases, we find the same, that our full equalizer model most frequently indeed uh, attends to people. Some more examples just to illustrate how we correct the prediction from a woman to a man and we see that the attention indeed has shifted to the person. In this case, it was a man, uh, but the attention was elsewhere in the kitchen and it has shifted uh, to the man. So to summarize this part, Equalizer is a new model which can overcome uh, bias in um, an image captioning. It achieves the lower error rate and the more correct ratio of men to women. And it's also most importantly right for the right reasons. And of course, for more details, please check out the corresponding paper, which I will reference uh, later in the talk. Now I'd like to move to the second part, where we kind of want to see how can XAI indeed facilitate trust and uh, improve user experience in this, in this uh, scenario of um, driving controllers. So first I'd like to say that attention maps or saliency maps, as we've just seen uh, in the previous slide, they are limited in, in, this, in the sense of what they can convey to the end user. To, um, to developers, this could be still useful, and we know how to interpret them, but they are not as detailed and, and not as easy to communicate to the end user. So we argue that, in fact, textual explanations would be a much more natural way to communicate if, in case of driving that what is happening and why. So humans themselves can easily describe visual scenes of driving with, in such a manner by providing things like a description of the action, like the car slows down, and an explanation for why this may have happened since it's about to turn left. So we collect a large data set uh, based on our Berkeley Deep Drive data. We annotate a subset of videos with these description and explanation pairs so that we know how humans would go about uh, explaining these behaviors of these driving scenes. Next, here is the overview of our model where we're exploring how, by making this model also explainable, how will this affect its overall performance? How, how well could we do this? So the two components are uh, the vehicle controller and the explanation generator. So the vehicle controller is going to observe uh, street, uh, the stream of videos as they come in, and every time predict the future agomotion, which is in our case acceleration and change of course. So it's an offline data set. We don't actually do this online, but we are based on our observations, um, predicting the future controls. Uh, so this is the, the actual task. And the explanation generator, as it watches this video, uh, generates these pairs of description explanation for these steps potentially uh, that exist in the video. So we can output things like the car is driving forward because there are no other cars in its lane. Um, and as you see at the bottom of this figure, 
there is this attention which uh, which is happening across frames. And in fact, both the controller and the explanation generator have access to have a visual attention over the frames. So the key idea which makes this method uh, work is that we want to align the, the attention of the controller and the justifier so that they actually uh, are faithful to each other, so that the justifier would mention exactly the, the, the cues that the controller has uh, paid attention to. Uh, few examples of the output of this. I hope you can see the video playing. Um, the car slows to a stop because there's a stop sign. So there's indeed this marking on the ground. Also at the top, you can see uh, how our predicted controls kind of align with the true human control that we have uh, uh, given in this in this video uh, most of the time. Oh, yeah, so, so we go through several event steps and so on. So this gives you some intuition of how uh, how this works. In, uh, in fact, we uh, we go ahead and actually ask human users if they think that the description and explanations are indeed true to the video, that they are accurate, and the overall outcome is that indeed they are uh, quite accurate and improve over the baseline. And one thing we noticed as we were looking closer and, and closer at these uh, descriptions and explanations is that they may not be as detailed as we would like. They are somewhat shallow in their ability to uh, refer to nuanced evidence, to talk about things like pedestrians. So we find in particular disturbing that uh, pedestrians are rarely mentioned and rarely attended to. And so this brings me to the second uh, part of this uh, line of work, which we've done uh, on advisable systems, where we believe that human advice uh, when given to this uh, type of uh, systems could uh, improve it by guiding it better as to what matters to the human user, right? So even more concretely, uh, we learn to drive both from practice but also theory. And theory is essentially a set of rules which tell us if you encounter this situation, this is how you should act. So we want to introduce this paradigm of observation and action rules into this advisable driving system. Where do we get these rules? So we actually go and revisit our data set where we have this description explanation pairs and we essentially repurpose them into observation action pairs because explanation sort of talks about the observations in the scene and the description in fact simply defines what action the vehicle is taking. And so if we now use uh, these, this, this observation action rules, our model design can look as follows. We will receive the visual evidence, uh, pass it through our object-centric visual encoder, and then our vehicle controller will be, um, will be producing spatial attentions over that. And finally, observation generator is going to issue these observations such as, you know, I can see that there is fog in the scene. And in turn, this will trigger a corresponding action command as the system has learned from these observation action pairs. So this can happen as a kind of uh, global knowledge that the system uh, has acquired. And then that action, uh, in, in turn, is fed back into the vehicle controller, bringing uh, the control command to be aware of that sort of textual action command. And so by, by doing that, we basically incorporate this, this human knowledge into the system, into the controller itself. Um, we find that in terms of the, the machine learning performance, we can actually improve over the systems which are not explainable. And specifically, if we want to get, uh, get more insight as to what the system can see, if we kind of subjectively ask the users, do you think it can recognize lane markings or stop signs or pedestrians? We find that overall, the explainable version provides them much more uh, intuition for, so that the system indeed can see pedestrians, for example. Uh, finally, we, we also migrate our system to a Carla uh, simulated environment and there we set up a human evaluation where users can see a car behave in an unexplainable manner with an explainable interface and finally in the advisable interface. And in all cases we ask the users, how much would you trust this driving system? And uh, surprisingly it, uh, to us we find that the explainable design wasn't enough to actually kind of uh, sway the users to trust the system more because they still saw that it was failing sometimes. And so the advisable design, which is also explainable, 
was able to convince them more because they could see that after providing advice, the system would indeed correct its behavior. And so the, the overall trust has been improved more significantly. So to sum up this part, our controller, the initial design explanation as additional loss leads to explainable model without losing uh, in performance. And the advisable design leads to actually improving performance. The model gets more interpretable and also gets a, a higher human trust. And so uh, I've covered uh, the following papers in this uh, talk. Please go ahead and check them out more closely and uh, get back to me with any questions. I'd like to thank my collaborators and